chapter, the 18th verse, God has said, uh, it is not good for a person to be alone. Everything else God had made, and it came to that decision that it was not good for a person, a man, to be alone. Okay, okay, we're going to have to do some things here. All right. All right. Who's that? Okay. 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 That we, God's creation is not alone. God is omnipresent. God is everywhere at the same time, all the time. Uh, that is the teaching of 
the doctrine of omnipresence. It is something beyond our comprehension that a person or a force could be everywhere at the same time. But we as humans need something more tangible that as we go through circumstances in our lives, we need more being just more than just the doctrine or a, 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 a concept of God being everywhere, being present with us all the time. We need something or someone that will aid in our faith. Uh, and, and God places those people, those things in our lives uh, as symbols, as a construct of, of, of how we may go about, uh, particularly when we are stressed in life. Um, God has promised this, and scripture has alluded to this, that he would never forsake us or leave us. Deuteronomy, uh, the 31st chapter, uh, the sixth verse, um, Joshua, the first chapter, the fifth verse, and Hebrews, the 13th chapter in the fifth verse, all inform us that God has promised us that he would never leave us or forsake us. That is good. That is good news. But how does God uh, Express God's presence here with us, some tangibleness to the great spirit being here with us that we would have a part of our understanding that truly God is a part of that relationship or that person assisting me or you. So here in the garden of Gethsemane, in Jesus, uh, as recorded by all four of us, but one in particular here uh, is assisted in Christ's agony in the garden. These uh, two verses, verses 43 and 44, are debated on whether or not it was part of the original manuscript or the autograph that the gospel writer of Luke had in mind. Uh, but it does gives us a lot of food for thought, as does the whole scene in the Garden of Gethsemane. Uh, Jesus shows us uh, how to pray in desperate times. Uh, it is part of what we call the low Christology of Jesus, more human than divine. And it is good that Jesus is showing us that even God himself had an issue with God's will. Mm -hmm. that, that Jesus was struggling with what God had allowed and had intended for God's own life. And that was a struggle. More struggle than we could ever imagine. But God was struggling within the Godhead on going to the cross to die for a person like me. And not that it was a courageous act in terms of dying for another. But I want to submit to you that Jesus sin and the Godhead could not tolerate sin. Second Corinthians the fifth chapter, verses 21, that Jesus became sin, who knew no sin, he became sin uh, for me, for you. And 
just that one instant of becoming sin, as opposed to God and all the purity thereof, and having to receive the cup or the judgment for that sin on that cross, just the thought of being separated from God, the purity of God. Now, the Son of God facing Calvary was just too much for Jesus. And so much so that God had to send a servant to Jesus. That it, the angel, that an angel appeared to give God something that would strengthen God. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Let it move around. If Jesus needed assistance, so do you and so do I. Particularly at our lowest moment, our most desperate moment, that, 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 that heaven needs to come down here and give us assistance. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane was a stone's throw away from the other disciples. And whoever that disciple was could hear Jesus praying justly, saying, uh, not my will, but your will be done. Implying that Jesus, like us, was in conflict with the very will of God, of whom he had an eternal relationship with. We have, as part of our existence on earth, is temporary a relationship with God, temporary going through the problems that we do go on earth. But Jesus present with us in heaven. Instance of God, and Jesus did not like that. He had a problem with it. He was in anguish with it, so much so that it knocked him to the ground. In, in the days of antiquity, most of the prayers was the prayer standing up. But was so devastating to Jesus, so overwhelming to Jesus. I've got to get on the ground. I've got to do all that I can do to even stand huh, and say a prayer in heaven, son, unto heaven on earth, uh, assistance. Huh? That even in Jesus' deepest, darkest moment of needing assistance, hmm? heaven was there. Heaven did not forsake or leave Jesus there. We all uh, will have yes, enemy days and nights. Whereas the anticipation of what is to come, facing tomorrow, facing uh, trials and tribulations will knock us down on our knees. And we would pray to God, why? We would wonder, we would even get angry. We become sorrowful, we become so overwhelmed that we cannot make it on our own except from God sending a system to us. That, 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 that God would be true to God's word, even to God's self, because God knows that the days of Gethsemane will come to each and every one of us, that we would be in conflict with God's will. Why did you let this happen to me? Why did you have to take my loved one, when you did. Why did I lose what I thought 
ahead. Why, why, oh God, are you allowing this to happen to me? And I can't take it. I need help. And God sends an angel. An angel through a dad. An angel through a mom. An angel through a friend. An angel through these wheels. An angel through Freeman Jesse. An angel through loved ones, past and present, and to come, God sends an angel. Heaven sends a sister through this church. Many folk have told me many of times that it had not been for Dallas any mission, they would have lost their mind. But it was the prayers of this church, the encouragement of this church, the uplifting of this church, the conflict of this church even, to contrast and compare with has helped many of people that you would be surprised. Some people who have come through those doors just once have been helped by the spirit that is here, that God has sent an angel to assist us. If Jesus is here, hmm, then heaven is assisting Jesus here. Yeah. And, and, and we, particularly the men, are responsible for not anyone being alone. That we will assist those who need assisting. That they will never ever be alone. Because we have the Christ in us. The God in us. The heaven in us. To not let anyone be alone. That that God working in us and through us will provide the consolation and the consolation, the comfort that any and everyone needs, no matter whether they are Apache, no matter whether they're commanding, no matter whether they're just power. They all need God's help, and we are there as men to make sure that they're never alone in the struggle. Because we all are going to need to praise cavalry. We all are going to have some problems about cavalry. We all are going to need some assistance about cavalry. And men in particular, being leaders in particular, are to lead and make sure that no one of our knowledge having to face cavalry alone. Mm. That, that, that we, like God from heaven, sent angels to assist Jesus there on earth to make it through the enemy. We must emulate our Father in heaven as such. If we cannot go through this life uh, not caring for others, so much so that we cannot provide assistance in their grief, in their sorrow, in their pain, in their joy, in their ups, in, in their joy, in their downs. We need to assist as father figures, as mother figures, as parent figures, as grandpa and grandma figures that we will never, ever leave someone else alone. Hmm? That even Jesus needed assistance. What about us? And also for the caregivers, we get so involved. Yes, we, I, I'm included. We get so involved in giving care as Jesus did. And Jesus did many, many miracles in the kindness that we don't get to a point that. We don't need to care for ourselves, care for the caregiver. That the caregiver needs just the same as 
amount of grace, same amount of assistance as Jesus did. So Jesus allowed the very God in heaven allowed himself to be ministered to. Sometimes we get so that we don't want, we wash other feet, people's feet just fine, but don't want our feet washed. As caregivers and as leaders, we get into this mindset that here we are, mm, mm, so strong, mm, and, 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 and so God, oh, all of this, and, 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 and we fail to submit ourselves to the circumstances that God allows into our lives so somebody can watch our feet, so somebody can assist us, so somebody can encourage us, so somebody can lift us up. Mm -hmm. And get it knocked down our pride too. Mm -hmm. When someone else is washing our feet, Jesus has shown us here in this garden of the city and the sea, of which we can learn so many things. But these two verses give account of how Jesus, on being assisted by the angel, and you cannot miss this, still prayed earnestly and then still went through that suffering. But he was not suffering alone. He still prayed and has still. Drops of blood came down from him. The angel still there with him, but he prayed it all, not alone. He went through it all, not alone. But the heaven was with him, and he was not alone. And on this Father's Day, we urge the fathers and the father figures to let no one go through Gethsemane alone. Mm. It's because I can tell you that God has never ever left us alone. He is true to God's word. And we who have received mm, must kill as we have received that we don't leave anyone alone in the garden of Gethsemane. Never alone. He has promised Never to leave alone. We will promise ourselves and others about us. We will never leave you, Sister Sandra, alone. We will never leave you, Sister Jean, alone. This church will never leave no one alone. Amen. amen. And amen. We have a slight change in invitational account. Uh, this song was sung on Friday night, passing on, and it's such a beautiful rendition of it. We want to pass it on to you. We just cannot keep it to ourselves, and we want to ensure that those who are online as well as so that you were not here on Friday night, and those who were here on Friday night will hear it again. My sister, Brother Sing Sing. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. 